Now Better Lender is a demo that comes with Monitor. So once the product is installed, the customer has the option of installing this demo uh, as a sort of a showcase demo that gives them a way to reference working dashboard pages as they create their own. It does include a special widget on the right hand side called Getting Started which has text and links and documents in it that um, talk about the capabilities of Monitor and it shows that in context to the page that you're looking at so it's, it's very helpful in that sense. So the page we're on is called Business at a Glance. It's one of several pages in the demo. It includes the diagram widget at the top. Now this is a really nice artifact that allows you to bring in your own image and then annotate it with text and colors to represent some information to the business user. In this case, um, it's an image of some dollar bills and a house and then um, some information about completed and new loans and loan failures and exceptions. We can see that they've used a bar chart, sort of a, a view, and colored it uh, depending on the, the status of those numbers. Uh, we'll use some other examples of the diagram widget later on and in other demos uh, as well. At the bottom is a KPI widget. So this is tracking six key performance indicators that have to do with the month to date or the year to date amount of the loans that we're tracking in our loan process. Uh, if we look at the diagram at the far right of this widget, the dark line represents the actual value which is um, 1881.25 in, in thousands and then the ranges that we've established for this KPI, very low, low, average, moderately high, and very high, and then the target is represented by the white line. And so this gives us a very quick visual indicator of how we're doing against our target and the different ranges that we specified. The targets and ranges can also be used to generate alerts if we cross those boundaries. So this pattern and in in colors these translate to the other visualizations that you can switch to such as half gauges, uh, full gauges, and you can change the size of these as well. Uh, a bar chart or uh, what's called a simple view. And these are all selectable uh, with the switch on the lower left of the widget. If we move to the business alerts page, this is another example of the diagram widget but now it represents the process. And rather than looking at a single process, it looks at the aggregates. And so it's really showing us how we're doing uh, from an overall business process health standpoint. If we've exceeded our targets in a good way, then we color the phase green. And if not, if we've missed it, then it's colored red. So um, this is a nice way to use the diagram widget. It can also be used for uh, representing a single process. It can also be used for layouts. Um, for maps and other types of diagrams. Below this is the alert widget and it looks like we have some alerts. We have a fee compliance alert on a certain loan. If we click this we can get the details and you can see that into the, the template of text the actual loan number has been inserted and we have a timestamp and the uh, name of the loan officer who is in charge of this. So alerts can represent very specific instances of information or they can tell us about KPIs and other aggregates as well and let us know that things are trending in the wrong direction. If we've crossed one of those boundaries this is um, where this might show up. Now in this particular case we're viewing the alert on our dashboard so it's called dashboard alert. You'll see later that we can subscribe to this to give us a cell phone alert or an email alert as well. Once we've gotten an alert we can mark it read or unread, send it to someone else in the system, change the priority, add comments to it or change its status. Now we have a view of the instances of active loans. This is a, an example of the instance widget. It's been filtered just to show us a subset of the, the loans that we're looking at. And we are exposing just four or five columns uh, of data out of the many more that we have available for each instance of the loan that's running. And you'll see an example of this in just a minute. But um, the instance widget is often filtered to limit the view uh, to that that's needed by the business user in their role for a particular uh, situation. If we switch over to the new loan application, we have some exception KPIs at the top tracking things like invalid applications and document failures, each with their own ranges and targets and values. And then another example of the instance widget at the bottom now filtered for just new loans and showing about the same information except we've now got a drill down window where we can see some 
uh, details that's happening on these set of new loans uh, that are being processed. Another page called Other Loan Applications include two other examples of the instance widget filtered for, in this case, in-process loans, and then at the bottom, um, looking at completed loans only, but then only showing data that makes sense when you're looking at the timing of different phases of the loan process. So we're looking at days in all cases here, how many days it took to set up, validate, underwrite, and close, and so on. So it's a handy uh, for a, a different category of business user to have it at, uh, at their disposal. The next page called Reports and Analysis really looks at the Cognos reports that have been defined uh, for this business space. And in this example, they show us the monthly total amount of completed loans. And then we can, since this is a Cognos report, we can drill into it and get further details. So we're going to drill down in, into June and look at the days of the month in June where we had uh, loans that were completed and look at those values. Now, we've just captured a couple of dimensions here, the time dimension and then also the total amount of completed loans. If we drill back up and look at the uh, lower report on loan analysis, you can see that we've captured some additional dimensions in this report. So we're capturing the time dimension, but we're also looking at status. So we're looking at which ones of these have been funded, completed, set up, or in post-close or in underwriting. And then we also have the loan officer dimension available to us. And once we drill down on that, we'll have an additional um, set of information to identify the loan officer that's in charge of this. So that's the way these Cognos reports work. They can be very dynamic if you're collecting the right uh, information. Scroll down a bit further and we're looking at the KPI history widget. This is a specialized widget to track an individual KPI over time. So the KPI we're looking at is called month to date amount of completed loans. We've got it set to look at a monthly period and show the data points for every day. And we're tracking the value of that KPI over time. So if you can uh, see the layers of color here, those map against the ranges that we've defined for this KPI and we can easily see when we cross the threshold from very low to low or low to high and so forth in tracking how this KPI is performing over time. Just another example of some of the reporting um, function. In this case, we're going to show how some of the widgets can interact with each other. And so I have a report viewer widget at the top that has some monthly information. And then I have an instance widget at the bottom, which shows um, I believe over 400 uh, instances altogether. One of the capabilities is to look at the report view and then drill down and show the instances that are related to that part of the chart that you're looking at. So if I look at June and I right click on June and say show me the instances, well this report links up to the instance widget and filters it down to the 29 instances that meet that criteria and you can see they're all reflective of the June date. And so the KPI widget works the same way. If I look over here at the KPI that's tracking the number of loans completed, then one of the capabilities it has is to show the instances that are represented by that KPI. And so now we see that the instance widget is now filtered from 400 down to 10 and so I can see very specifically those 10 instances that meet that criteria. The last page is the tools page and these are used less often um, and maybe by administrators but maybe some business users have access to these depending on how you set up the system. This is where in the alert manager I can subscribe to different types of alerts that are there and determine the method I want to use to receive those, whether dashboard, cell, email, pager, and so on. The KPI manager widget allows me to look at the properties of the KPIs that are set up. I can look at the underlying data and how the definition of the KPI was created. Look at the ranges and what those ranges mean. If I'm authorized, I can create new KPIs uh, on the fly for myself or share those with the group if I'm authorized to do that. So there are several capabilities here. The Report Designer widget allows me to create new reports that are not currently available. I select the correct package 
and by just making a couple of selections, uh, for instance, the, the loan officer involved, maybe the uh, total amount of applications, maybe the time the loan processing started, and I can do a preview of what that Cognos report might look like. and make some adjustments if needed and then save that chart and once it's saved I can use it in any report viewer on any of my pages or add a new report viewer to a new page and have access to that report. This completes our quick look at the Better Lender business space.